2020. Tonight we have uh, one tabled matter and five scheduled matters on the agenda. We have proof of legal publication in the Webster Herald for all these items. So before we get started, let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kathy, you want to take roll, please? <coughs> yes. Mr. Barone? Here. Mrs. Volo? Here. Mr. DeMarco? Here. Mr. Schneider? Here. Mr. Halzo? Here. Mr. Artuso? Here. Okay. Um, now, the first uh, matter, I think what we'll do is we'll reread re in the record. Uh, the applicant was here a, a couple of meetings ago, and uh, she took some time to reconsider her application. So, if Corinne could read that into the yes. record, please. 589 Adams Road Fence, located at 589 Adams Road. Applicant Amy, Amy Holt is requesting area variances to allow a five foot tall fence two feet from the southern property line and a five-foot fence three feet from the northern property line where five feet is required to legalize an existing six-foot tall fence on the western property line where ten feet is required and to legalize all an, an existing six-foot tall section in the front setback on a .37 acre parcel having SBL number 063.11-2-40 located in an R3 single-family residential district under section 225-77C of the code of the town of Webster. Okay, uh, for the record, just identify yourself once again and tell us what you what you came up with. Um, hi, my name is Amy Holtz and I am the owner at 589 Adams Road. I um, have spent a lot of time in my backyard looking at fencing and property lines and options. Um, and have come back asking for a five-foot fence rather than a six-foot fence. Um, although I don't feel that's adequate for the dog that I have in my backyard. He has jumped my four-foot fence now twice in the last two weeks. Uh, Corinne came out to my site the other day, and I had an e-collar around my neck now that I have to shock him if he tries to jump out. Um, but I am willing to bend a little bit to get a higher fence in my property. So if five foot is all I can do, that's what I'm going to ask for. I think one of the major um, changes that the board, I think Mr. Hauser brought it up, was along St. Rita's Court. And that's the south property line, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's where he's jumping out. <laughs> There's the deer over there. And what we're looking at is you want to be two feet from that property line, and it should be 40, correct, Mike? Okay. Well, because well, of the... Is that a private drive, though, or is that a town road? It says ROW, road? Road. so we, we, we uh, determined that what we thought it's a, a town dedicated road. road. It looks like a private drive. It's a private drive. It's, it's plowed it's by a private contractor. It's plowed by the is town. It? Yes. Yeah, I spoke to the highway superintendent, and he was not aware that St. Rita's was also considered a town road because they, they do not plow it or maintain okay. it. So that really becomes a side yard because right. it's along a driveway. It's not a front yard. It's a corner lot. It's a right away. It's just a driveway. It's just not a traditional right It's not a right away because nobody's maintaining the trees over okay. there. I think what's through us is it says 55, 50 foot wide ROW, which typically ind indicates it's a town right of way. Okay. Yeah, and I went out there and I measured the 50 feet to see what part the town is taking care of and what part they're not. Basically, that road, St. Rita's Court, is, is a single lane road that's mm -hmm. private. I, that, that makes a big difference to me. Uh, now, I, I've kind of softened my position a little bit. I mean, there's... now. I, I didn't say this at the beginning. I mean, we only have four members tonight. You need you need three votes, so you can postpone it again or table it again if you want, or you can proceed. <laughs> it's going okay. Thank you. But you have the right to table it again if it doesn't look like it's going the way the way you'd like I it to be, because you're you know you have a right to be heard before full board. So I thought quite a bit about this, and 
we see applicants coming in here all the time <clears throat> with, um, with sheds and fences and additions to, that were put on houses where there were no permits, there were no variances, and frankly, most people are unaware of the, you know, the legal implications of that, and they depend on their attorney at closing to protect them. Mm -hmm. And it's not happening in all, all cases as, as it should. It, it's, becoming, it's becoming more and more of an issue. Attorneys are checking for permits, variances, um, and as it should be, because you didn't have the option to make the previous owner fix it. Correct. So I was shocked. Or, or, or you could have walked away from the deal if, if, the, if, right. if it wasn't a, a legal offense. So even though it's like that rear fence, even though it's not, we wouldn't approve it today, my thought is you bought a problem and you weren't made aware of it before you bought the problem. And we've seen, we, we just gave a variance on a shed on Gravel Road a meeting or two ago, way too close to the line. Well, they didn't know it. Their attorney didn't catch it. So they bought a prop. The people, when they purchased the house, bought themselves a problem. So I'm, I'm kind of softening my position on that rear fence. I don't know about the rear. I just speak for myself. Well, something that might help you also soften that, I, I measured. And if you look at the frame shed on the map, it says that there is 16.8 feet there. There's 15 feet there. So that rear fence is actually in further from the rear property line. Mm. So there is enough room for me to get back there and maintain that fence should Richard and Phyllis Bott move. I'm, I'm, I want to look at that map again. Yeah, it's where the, it says frame shed, and then it says 16.8 feet. Mm -hmm. There's 15 feet at that point, and the uh, further side on St. Rita's Court says 2 feet. So there is enough room for me to get in with a mower, trim, hedge, change the fence out should that neighbor change and they not be agreeable to me maintaining that fence. Okay. Now, uh, let, me, let me let the other board members voice their opinions. Well, I honestly looked at this like the application we had on Bay Road last meeting, two meetings ago, um, along Avalon Trail. So it, it to me, the, the side fence was not an issue because we had just dealt with a similar issue. When I was at the property, um, I don't know, Saturday or Sunday, there had to be half a dozen cars that went down that road and there were a lot of walkers around. That There was a lot more traffic than I would have thought for that little, for a little driveway. So, you know, definitely wanting to keep the pet contained and keep a little bit of privacy in that backyard, um, which is wide open to St. Rita's Court. Um, I, I am in favor of that just based on standing there for long enough to, to see the situation. Um, the, the rear fence, we do have a letter from Mr. and Mrs. Bott that they're actually welcoming that an attractive fence would be fixed so it would all look the same as opposed to, it's kind of a little, <laughs> little, little quilt work hi, back hi. there. <laughs> yeah, Mish, Mish. Oh, okay. um, so, and, and again, Barry, as you had said, that unfortunately for Ms. Holt, the previous homeowner and the attorneys missed it and did not do the due diligence that they're supposed to, and I wish we could fix that because we see so much of that at this board. Um, but looking at the tree line that I took a couple of pictures of, I don't know that there would be another logical location for it <coughs> that wouldn't eat up all, you know, a significant part of the usable yard. It's, it's, it's a small lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's less than 0.4 acres, is, but that's just me. Yeah, it's only 160 feet deep. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so you're comparing St. Rita's Court to the dentist's office over on Bay Road. Well, that's the private feet. drive. The, the, yeah. There was a private yeah. drive right alongside. Right, there. there's the private <coughs> drive, but there's also the dentist's office on the other side. So you've got, um, you know, some pretty serious impingement there. Yeah, that, I mean, that one, unfortunately for them, had privacy issues on both sides of it. Mm -hmm. This one has less of an issue other than the neighbor that's to the north would really prefer the fence just because she's got small children and 
I'd like to make sure that also the animals are contained. Um, but that one is, is in three feet. It looks, from when I was standing on the property line, it seems like it's further in than even the edge of the driveway is. So it, that one didn't concern me at all because there's certainly three feet to get in there and, and mow around it. I'd still like to see more than two feet from the property line at <laughs> one side. I mean, say I, mean, part side I mean, for maintenance purposes, I mean, that, that's been our position forever, is that we need room to maintain that six foot fence. I requested uh, 30. 30 feet in from the lot line? Yeah, on the south side, San Diego's part. I thought we were talking 20 back at the beginning of June. <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I stand corrected. That's my notes here, yep. but still, that's a big chunk of a small lot, and if it is a private drive rather than a dedicated road, I would, and two feet of lawnmower sweat for my push mower, so, so that's not ridiculous. I mean, you'd rather have more, but to Ms. Volo's point, it's, it is a small lot. And and not that it should have any bearing on the decision or not, but that, that strip of, we'll call it grass, um, but the, the strip between Ms. Holt's property line and the edge of the driveway of St. Rita's Court um, is, is just a mess of poison ivy and weeds. And it's not maintained. So it's not maintained at all. No. Did you take a picture of that too, standing I, in it? I did not stand in it, but I did take a couple of pictures next to it. Um, but. But yeah, I mean, so so any forcing the applicant to move the fence further in is just going to welcome the poison ivy further into her yard. No one's going to maintain that edge of the fence. So I and, and we have letters from everybody that owns a piece of that driveway that says, "Yeah, go ahead." So I'm just who maintains the uh, lawn on both sides of the driveway? Do you know this? this is? Um, the, there is no lawn, lawn uh, between St. Rita's Court and my fence. It's, like she said, poison ivy, raspberry bushes, dead trees. Illegal um, natural. It was, it, it's it's what we would call forever wild. <coughs> so, and I immediately asked that when I moved in because I started cutting down trees to make it look nicer before I installed my new fence. And I asked, does anybody care if I start, you know, maintaining this and taking care of it? And they said, we're not going to. <laughs> so there, there's nobody maintaining it at this point. When I called, I think I called the town to find out, and then the highway department said that's not our job because there's dead trees in there. They said that's not a public road that we maintain, so we're not taking care of the dead trees. Is there a homeowners association there? There's not, because they've been looking at paving that private road, and I said this will be interesting to see who pays for that. <laughs> how many um, how many uh, homes or units are on St. Uh, four, I think. Yeah, I think it's four. So it's five. five. Okay. Yep. So, so they, they well, I think they do have a procedure for a uh, of an expedited or mini HOA, but I don't think we can. Yeah, order that that right. Right. take place. That must have been way before the 68 code change because it would have had to have been dedicated with five houses on it. Most of the people living back there are elderly. There's only one new family back there. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the record should also reflect that there already has it, that the, not only are, is there a uh, affidavit or a letter from the bots, but there's also uh, the Baxters now. Uh, yes, the Baxters lunch. have actually said to me that they appreciate the fence. Uh, Mrs. Baxter is afraid of dogs. Not my dogs, just dogs in general. So she does, you know, she just doesn't want to be around them. Josh, can you pull up the uh, tax map on your computer? See who owns that, or if it has any tax and account numbers. Terry Hoy and which property? As far as the stretch of road? The stretch of road, yes. So we've got three letters from St. Rita's Courts and two from Adams Road. Yeah, I, I, I chose to go to a lady who lives directly across from me, mm -hmm. who has to look at it every day. So I got a letter from her. 
and then of course the neighbor next to me that that's adjoining her property and Mr. Bott who's behind me and then the others on St. Rita's that have a similar fence. The more feedback you get to the from the neighbors, the better, obviously, because that helps us with our decision. I don't, we, I don't think we've ever approved a six-foot fence less than three feet from the line, have we? Yeah, but we're talking five. Yeah, I asked for five just because, you know, I'm trying to work with you guys. I'm trying to contain my animals. I'm trying to upgrade the property. It looks not nice. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm reading two feet on the application. Five, five-foot tall fence. Two feet in on the okay. south side. Oh, you're not saying five feet, you're saying five foot tall fence. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay. It's it's still just that maintenance issue. Uh, I guess I'm just trying to gauge, you know, how the board feels about that because we make decisions that are going to impact us in the future. I can get a, you know, in a two foot swipe, I can get a single mower in there. That's what I'm using right now. I hope to sometime be able to use a bigger mower, but... It's a single mower, and should I become a double wide, I think I can still fit in with that two foot span to paint if I need to. Well, being a five foot fence, that does make a difference because the code's different for five foot fence than it is for a six foot. Yeah, actually, a five foot fence only needs to be five feet in the property, a six foot would be ten feet. So right, right. That really, really reduces the impact of the variance. Right. And that's, you know, like I said, I've spent a lot of time back there trying to figure out, you know, how I could work with you guys and make this work. And that's why I said, if I got to go five, I will. Okay. Well, this meeting is open to the public. Anyone wishing to speak for or against this application, you can call us at 872 Okay. And, um, which, which property are you? <laughs> well, uh, the applicant's property. Uh, it should show at least the uh, tax out number for um, St. Rita's support. It just actually some, somebody, some, somebody needs to own it, is what I'm saying. If it's private, someone needs to own it. So one of those people back there, you're thinking, owns it? Yeah, yeah cool. we don't know if they're flag lots or if there's a common right away with an HOA. Well, that's why... Right. The, the GIS map just shows a driveway that lines through all four of the lots a piece of it. Then nobody owns it. It's free. <laughs> it's free? Free as the wind. Hmm. That's a bad situation. Yeah. I, I could buy that. Because I'm finding out. <laughs> driving through my property. Oh, I double dog dare you. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. <laughs> you can't do much with it. It's only 50 feet wide. Yeah, but there's Pursuant no... to... Uh, uh, section 617.5 of the Environmental Code, I'll make a motion for Type 2 secret. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Josh was saying something very... I'm sorry. Josh was saying something. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, um, a look at, at the uh, county's parcel viewer, it doesn't indicate a separate parcel for that portion of St. Rita's Court. It, it appears as if it's part of the right-of-way. Well, that's why my assumption was that it was dedicated right away. <laughs> but apparently it's not, so it's a kind of a weird situation. Well, yeah. Yeah. And don't ask, don't tell. The, the, the street around the corner, Haven Court, also appears the same way, but that one actually has a sign on it that says private drive on the street sign itself. The St. Rita's does it's say Rita's. private drive yeah. on it too, but it's so old and worn out that you can't read it anymore. Oh. <laughs> Nobody wants to pay to replace it. Well, and that was because I didn't know St. Rita's Court was there because the sign is so faded that I missed it. How do they ever get anybody paid to come in and plow in the winter? Oh. They just get together and they hire a contractor and they share the cost. <laughs> it must be a pretty was, loose, a loose agreement, but yeah. you, you get one person that wants to abstain from that, it yeah. just follows everything up. That could be ugly. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why we have five lots. Yeah, yeah. I don't think anyone's calling in, so I'll close the public portion of the meeting. Bring it back to the board. I, uh, I think your tabling of the meeting a couple times helped because, and from my perspective, it gave me a little more time to think about it. 
So I think I had a lot of time too. We could have revisited the site. Um, there's a little bit of a question about St. Rita's Court, but when I visited, I, I saw exactly what you described. It's it looks like an unmaintained uh, piece of uh, earth between the driveway and her property. It looks just like it's grown wild for years. Um, so I don't think the neighbors, uh, I don't think the neighbors are going to have an issue with the fence there. I, there's probably not much traffic on that St. Rita's Court, I wouldn't imagine. Only when I'm standing there in my bathroom. That's when the traffic comes. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> for Murphy's Law. Yeah. Okay. We, you know, it's, again, I said to Gary when she was there, I said, listen, you know, 6.30 in the morning, I'm out here in my bathroom. I'm sure they would appreciate a higher fence. Okay. Well, well, and the only people that are going to go back there, it's not through to anything, so it is the people that live there or who visit who live there. So it is a limited a, li a limited list of people who, I don't want to say would care, but that would be impacted. And, and honestly, I don't like looking at what's not kept on the other side of that fence. I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. It stresses me out. Would somebody like to run for the standards? Um, so we're, we're, we're going with a five foot fence on the north side and the south side. Mm -hmm. And we're going to allow the existence, the continued existence of the six foot fence on the west side? Right. That's, yes. that's what I understood. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's what's proposed. Okay. Um, okay, so the request is not out of character in the neighborhood. There are a couple of other six-foot fences on the lot line. Um, the applicant has agreed to take this to five feet and move it in far enough to be maintained, so it's not out of character. Um, no detriment created to nearby properties. The um, house immediately to the north is going to have the three-foot buffer, uh, so that won't be a detriment. The house to the west is actually quite a ways removed from the existing fence, so I don't see a detriment there. Benefits not achievable by any other method because of the size of the lot involved. If we were going to hold the setbacks as they are enumerated in the code, it would be a significant portion of the lot taken. Um, <clears throat> request is not substantial at a six foot fence on the lot line. It was, but five foot, uh, two to three feet in is not as substantial. No adverse physical or environmental impacts. Uh, difficulty is not self created. Um, the five foot sections, yeah, they sort of are. Um, Strictly speaking, the six-foot section legally is still self-created, but due to the incompetence of the attorney involved on Ms. Holtz's behalf, um, this was not caught. And I'll say incompetence in no uncertain terms, because as Ms. Vola pointed out, we're seeing far too many of these. Um, it's not an undesirable change in the neighborhood. Um, again, it's not out of character. It's not going to create problems. And um, I'd like to add that we have letters from the adjacent neighbors that have no opposition to this application. All the immediate neighbors are actually in favor of this application. Yes. So that, that's important. Okay. And we'll keep copies of those in the record with the minutes. You want to make a motion, Eric? Sure. Um, all that said, I'll make a motion to allow fences within the setbacks of the lot line at 589 Adams Road to allow a five foot tall fence two foot from the southerly properly line and a five foot tall fence three foot from the northerly property line where five foot is required and to legalize an existing six foot tall fence on the western property line where 10 foot is required and to legalize the existing six foot tall fence section in the front setback on the 0.37 acre parcel having SBL number 
located in an R3 single family residential district under section 225-77C of the code of the town of Webster. Second. Mr. Snyder. Aye. Mrs. Bola. Aye. Mr. Barone. Aye. Mr. Hauser. Nay. Okay, you have your variance. You, you. you need to get a building permit. And it would probably be wise to get a survey of the property, have a survey or market, mm -hmm. because if, if you're outside of it again, then you have no excuses. <laughs> yeah, I was told I can call this survey company back and they'll come and put pins in for an additional charge. That, that, that would be wise. Yep. All right. Thank uh, you. So again, uh, one year meaningful, one year meaningful construction. Get your building permit. You have your variance. Good luck. First scheduled matter. 1234 Woodhull Road Deck, located at 1234 Woodhull Road, applicant Gerald Higgins is requesting an area variance to allow a 64 foot front setback where 75 feet is required, associated with the construction of an 8 foot by 20 foot deck on a 0.7 acre parcel, giving SBL number 050.03 1 12. Located in an R1 single family district under section 225-9B of the Code of the Town of Webster. Good evening. Could you uh, state your name and tell us about your project, please? Yes, my name is Victor Higgins. I'm here on behalf of my son, Gerald Higgins, um, with a request for a variance for the deck in front of his house. And uh, I guess the simple question is, tell us why you can't comply. Well, it, it, actually, it's... The uh, house, the setback in the house, it just misses the, I think it's the 75 feet required. In fact, if you look at the, the lot, the way the wood hall comes across, comes across an angle, part of the deck would be acceptable and part of it wouldn't be. It's right on the edge. I've got this computer screen in front of me. I still go through the papers. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Old habits are tough like to break. It's, e it's easier to read the paper. It's a contrast. <laughs> yeah, so I, I apologize for the rustling of paper noise. <laughs> Karen comes up with all these fabulous ideas here. We, i got to get used to it. i got to get into the 2020s, I guess. Okay. Uh, to your point, okay, the house is closer to the road than the setback the current the zoning requires. Yes. That's right. You're at 72... Point three feet. It's supposed to be 75. You are on the curve on the road, which uh, is, has some bearing on it. We see a lot of front porches. Um, a lot of um, a lot of homes are built right on the setback line because the builders don't want to pay more money to put the house back for this one. Is for it was probably built before the zoning. Um, well, yeah. Well, they've been there. I don't know when zoning was. It was, was the Tower 1, which is 75, right? And it's been R1 since the 30s. Okay. So, but there's no variance for the house at this point in time, I, I don't believe. Would you Would you have that information, Josh? I don't. Okay. I bet you Woodhall Road was a dirt road. And I bet you the right-of-way moved a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. We, lately, we've seen a lot, a lot of front porches, and there's only one place to put a front porch, and that's on the front of the house. People like sitting out. Actually, we we did we built one across the street from you. Uh, Actually, right that, that the house was completely redone. It turned out really nice. Yes, the house is beautiful. Um, it's a uh, it's a nice nice street to sit out on and just relax and enjoy. You know, people walking and running up and down the road. You know. Um, Eight feet in width is not, it's, 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 uh, it's not excessive. I mean, if you go with a six-foot porch and you put chairs and a table out there, you, you have trouble walking around them. So I don't think eight feet is excessive. Uh, and the width of the porch is really not, not an issue. It's 20 feet wide. Because as, actually it's just, you know, it's all in the front setback, but the 
porch gets further from the road as you travel east. So. Yeah. Now, is it gonna is it gonna have a roof over? Or? Pardon? Is it gonna have a, a roof over? Or just no, a no, it's just a deck. Just a deck. Yeah, open deck. Okay. Do you intend to put a roof over at some point? No. Okay. Because that would have to be part of the part of our variance if we grant the variance. Okay. Do you want to condition the variance that there is no roof? Yeah, let's do that, and then in the future, if you want to add a roof, you'd have to you'd have to come back to the board, whenever that might be, and you know, and see what the opinion is at that point in time. Yeah, the, the, I when I visited the site, the houses uh, down the road, they're you know, they're all about the same setback. It's on a curb, so it's kind of odd. He's on. He's kind of in an awkward position because then the road straightens out and the houses are lined up, but he's on that curb, which actually seems to pull, pull the house closer to the road because it curves toward the house. Yeah, it's heavily wooded on the, uh, to the east of them. Yeah. So, I mean, you don't even see the house until you're right there in front of the right. house right. traveling westbound. Interestingly, if that was a patio, you wouldn't even need, I mean, if it was on grade, you wouldn't even need a variance. <clears throat> but being a deck and it's an elevated structure, then you need the variance. Okay. Okay. Uh, this meeting is open to the public. Anyone wishing to speak for or against this application, you can call us at 872-7011. Straightforward. Okay. Pursuant to 617.5 in the Environmental Code, I'll make a motion for a Type 2 secret. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't really have much more to say about this. It's pretty straightforward. 75 feet is a substantial setback. It's th the yeah. house is fairly far setback off the road. It's not like it's you know, 20 feet right on top. Um, the house that's further to the east is setting back further. Yeah. So the house that's further to the east is set way, way back, and the woods, they'll never even see this. Um, and the house to the west, it's, it's wooded along that property line as well. So I don't, I, I don't see where it would be an issue. You may as well keep going. You've gone through half the standards. <laughs> you just don't you're doing, you're doing good. You got momentum. Uh, I lost my man. Um, the request is not out of character at the neighborhood. There are other houses in the area that have front porches and have had front porches added to them as well. Um, it, it is a new trend that people want to sit out on the porch again, which is lovely. People will get to know their neighbors again. There is no detriment created to nearby properties. Um, the neighbor to the east is back in the woods and will never see it. The neighbor to the west, it's kind of hidden from them as well. Um, a front porch cannot be put any place other than the front of the house, so therefore it's not achievable by any other method. I would say it's not substantial because the house is on a curve. Um, as the road curves away, um, the, the porch is less in the setback as it gets further to the east. Um, the difficulty is not self-created. I mean, the house is put right up on the front setback line, actually a little bit before the front setback line. It's not an undesirable change and no adverse physical or environmental impacts to the neighborhood or the site. Um, anything else? I don't believe anyone's going to call, so I'll close the public portion of the meeting. Okay. With that, I'll make a motion to grant an area variance for a front deck located at 1234 Woodhull Road for the applicant Ger Gerald Higgins to allow a 64 foot front setback where 75 feet is required associated with the construction of an 8 by 20 foot deck on a 0.7 acre parcel having SBL number 050.03-1-12 and located in an R1 single family district under section 225-9B of the code of the town of Webster. Second. Mrs. Bolan? Aye. Mr. Barron? Aye. Mr. Snyder? Aye. Mr. Hauser? Aye. All right, you have your variance, and uh, just the two conditions. Uh, you have to get a building permit, and the variance is good for one year. You have to begin construction within one year, or else you got to come back to the board. I think you're going to probably do it right away anyway, so. All right, good luck with your project. Have a good evening. Thank you. Okay.
Okay, next item on the agenda is 603 Lake Pines Trail Shed. All right. 603 Pine Lakes Trail Shed, located at 603 Pine Lakes Trail. Applicant Timothy Hickey is requesting area variances to allow five foot side and rear setbacks, where 15 feet is required, associated with the installation of a 10 by 12 foot utility shed on a 0.24 acre parcel having SBL number 065.02-2.44 located in an R3 single family residential district under section 225-48 of the code of the town of Webster. Good evening. Could you state your name for the record and then just tell us about your project please. My name is uh, Timothy Hickey. I live at 603 Pine Lakes Trail, which is a new development off of uh, Phillips Road, right near Sh Schlegel Road. And I'd like to put a uh, 10 by 12 shed in my backyard, which is 75 feet wide by 53 feet from the back line to my house. Uh, it's less than a quarter of an acre. It's, it's relatively small. There are no homes behind my house all the way out to Phillips Road. Um, and I'm asking for a variance to be able to put the shed um, five feet from each the rear lot line and the north lot line. Uh, I think the standard is 15 feet by code. And um, it's a 10 by 12 shed that would kind of put it in the middle of my backyard or very close and take up quite a lot of space. The shed is um, will be sited to match my home. Uh, it's very nice in appearance and on a stone base. Okay. We we've looked at uh, some other shed, other many other shed variances in that neighborhood. In that neighborhood. Now, is this lot wider than the typical lot there, of 75? Is that, you have you have larger side setbacks on your house than a lot of a lot of the homes we've seen. It's, it's about, I think about it's same size. less than a quarter of an acre. It's 75 feet wide, and I think it's 140 feet, feet deep. Small lot. It's a small lot. Yes. Yeah, it's a point two. It's a quarter quarter acre lot. Yeah, quarter acre. Okay. Now I know we've not been against the five foot rear setback because most of those lots so far with sheds have backed up to um, green space. I'll call it, but. I don't recall if we've tried to make them in line with the side of the house so that from the road they're not visible. Yeah, that's what I was, I was just looking at that because on some of these homes it's only eight feet, seven feet from, from the lot line. This, this house is uh, actually 14.2 feet. I just wondered if the lot was wider or the house was narrower. That's to the driveway. Pardon me? That's to the driveway. This house doesn't have any side setbacks shown on the instrument survey. I was just looking at that. Now we're getting a lot of instrument surveys that don't actually locate the dwelling. And they should. They and should be rejected and... Why is that? Well, they should be rejected and redone to indicate the setbacks. I'm not sure this matters, but I know that other people have made application for the same type of variance. Right. Uh, and their sheds are totally visible from the road. Uh, some of the yards are actually sideways to the road, and you can easily. I know that we had a couple side, uh, corner lots that requested it. You can't help but yeah, the corner lots are right. forced into the corner. Yeah. Choice, but to see it. Do you see the side setback on the other side? I don't, I don't see a tie. Mm -hmm. Very little no, just information. What we're, what we're considering here is some of the other lots, the side setbacks on the house were, were actually quite a, substantially less than what you have. That's why mm -hmm. that's why we're, uh, we're thinking a little bit more about this than we have on a couple of the other corner lots where there was just no place else to put the shed. I think that by scale on the northern property line, I'm scaling 
12 feet to the house. Mm -hmm. Where the chimney's located? About 12. Yeah. Chimney and scaling approximately 8 feet. Would you um, would you entertain the thought of moving it off that side line a bit more? To Corinne's point, there's a green space behind you. So that five foot really is not a lot of consequence. Uh, but your house is 14 feet off that side line, and it's we kind of like to have the shed a little bit hidden behind the house. You know, as it is, it's a uh, it's um, going to be quite visible in that direction. I don't know, what, which, you, you folks have the same opinion as I do? Or? <clears throat> well, that's typically what we've been looking at is, okay, we've got, you know, a buffer zone with a berm in it to the um, west. So that's not an issue. It's not going to cause problems for any other residents. But um, to the idea that we want the shed less visible from the street and no impact on lot 218 in the future. Mm -hmm. um, more than five foot would be warranted in this case. I agree. What do you, what do you think? There, there would be somewhat in keeping of what the intent of the uh, set code would be for R3 zone. Could be like or any zone really. Yeah. Which one is lot 218? Well, I'm sorry. You, you mentioned the one to the north. north. Oh, um, so that's a neighbor that is already lives there, uh, and he has absolutely no problem with it. I, of course, spoke to him about it, and I sent a letter to him, too. His name is Mike Orsini. They've been there a few years. It, it is still, even though, even though the house, see, it's a, it's a fairly narrow house, but even even though the house uh, has a 14.2 foot side setback, it's still a narrow lot. I'm I'm thinking maybe 10 feet on that side. Right? 15, I think, would be way too much. But it would push that shed way open too far. Don, did you scale the chimney to eight or? That's awful thick property line. Um, I, and but, I but, but, you know, don't have a scale. Yeah, uh, let's say 10. Just for arguments. The, the ones we've granted a five foot side setback always had a circumstance where it was it had to be that for a reason. The, the, like the, the house was like seven feet off the line, or, or uh, mm -hmm. there was always something that drove that that decision. I'm not sure that this would make a difference. Uh, either I had. I believe Northeastern Pools made a application for a permit uh, with, for an inbound pool in the backyard, which has been put off till next summer now. Um, and if the, if I go 10 feet off that line, I'm I'm really starting to get. I guess you can put a pool in any size, but I was considering putting a pool, and they made I kind of canceled it for now, but I'm going to get back on board with it, and that will really impact my. Uh, well, 10 feet plus the 12 feet, so I'm 22 feet into the yard now. Uh, and that setback is also 15 feet, I think, for pool lines from the other side. So I'm getting kind of to the point where it really becomes difficult to do that, too. Um, uh, this meeting is open to the public. Anyone wishing to speak for or against this application? Our number is 8727011. Um, okay, pursuant to 617.5 of the Environmental Code, I'll make a motion for a Type 2 seeker. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I think, what do you think, Corinne? I, 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 I think I, I understand what Don's, <coughs> Don's opinion is and the error that thought we had tried to move it more behind the house but then I guess that being said if there's more going into the backyard that might have been helpful to have on this map but I mean it's a it's, it's 
a small lot. I don't know how much it can actually fit back there. Or, or if it's possible to turn the shed, which then would have it impinging less in the backyard a little bit. Did you consider putting it on the other side of the house or not? On the other, the other side of the yard? Um, I, I could. The only reason is less the setback to the line. There's a couple feet less there, which would hide the shed a little bit more from the street. But um, I, I think if I, had couple, ten, if, I, if I had to go 10 feet from the north side, I, I'm, I just might not do it at all. Um, but I probably could do it from the south side if I could have the five and five. Well, I. I mean, the problem is the survey map that you were given doesn't have any setbacks of the house, so we're kind of guessing as to where, how yeah. far over the house is. And I don't know. I don't know. And, and I, 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 the people that gave you this survey map should know enough. They've been doing it long enough. They should know that you need location dimensions. Mm -hmm. um, and I won't throw them under the bus beyond that. <laughs> well, I'm assuming it was used for the closing, and they're just, you know, reutilizing it now. I don't think it was prepared for this purpose. But Well, no, but I would think that for a survey map, wouldn't you have a location of... Well, I'm thinking the bank would be really like that at the time. Yeah. 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 Let's say you probably didn't get a discount to go without the side bed. Yeah, <laughs> I, it just, I so, so it just, we're, we're kind of guessing. Um, and I, and I have no issue at all with the rear because that that's backing up to, to green space and, and it's not going to impact anybody. Yep. But I'm more concerned with the impact to either 601 or 605, depending on where you put it. Um, and, and maybe they won't care, but... If six, I think 601 is my name, or Mike well, Marcini doesn't care. We, we could do the math right. and add up all those numbers with the house and determine what that side is. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Um, your pool is probably going to go to the north because you have uh, the back of the house shuts out and an egress window is to the south. Would it make more sense to put the shed back there and it leaves you a huge area for the pool? You, fo you follow my logic? Uh, to put it back where? Well, it seemed that the shed went on the other side, okay. with a slightly larger side setback, that leaves a huge area for a pool right behind your covered porch and that 18 foot, looks like your great room or family room there. The southwest corner. Yeah. Southwest. Put the shed in the, yeah, south, uh, southwest instead of the northwest corner. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at the map, you can't, you're not going to put your pool behind that egress window, you're going to put it. North, on the north side of the... But it's, honestly, it gets really, really, really tight you know, with the 15-foot, you know, to the edge of uh, concrete walkways for the pool. Um, so we start to get kind of tight. Uh, but I would certainly... It, can I... Can it be 5 and 5 from the southwest corner? No. We'd no. probably like to see a little bit more of a side setback as well. The rear setback, I don't think we have any problem with that. The 5-foot rear, it's the side setback... That, that we're concerned with. The, the board is indicating if you're standing at the road and you're looking at the yeah, building, I get it. they're trying to get it tucked behind as We'd like to best hide. as yeah. possible. Right. You could, if you want to, you could table it, go out there and measure it and see if you can handle 10 feet. I mean, if, if you don't... Uh, I just assume that table it. If, I, you know, if that's what the board uh, approves, um, fine. Well, I think the board would approve. I, I can't tell till they vote. Yes, okay. Five foot rear, ten foot side, I'm pretty sure they would approve that. But once we approve that, then you're, you're bound. What Mr. DeMarco is suggesting is you want to wait till next meeting and think about that and maybe stake it out in your yard and see if that works for you. If you um, indicate or approve five foot rear, ten foot sides, <coughs> Can I can I go with that tonight and just would I be able to put it in maybe if I reassess and put it in the middle of the backyard, five foot in, and it would be twenty feet from each side. But well, so am I getting that, approval that, to go that anywhere side. along the back, providing I'm within ten from either north or south boundary and five from the back? 
Well, the, the way the code reads, yeah. you have to be 15 okay. from the sideline. Yeah. If you're going to put it in the middle of the yard, you don't need a side setback. Right? I know, but I'm, I'm not sure I'd do that. I would like to, I guess, but walk I out of here. I think what he's saying is he walks out tonight with the one setback, the rear setback, and puts it anywhere within the area that he doesn't need side setbacks. Can he go forward? I, I, I'm, I guess I'm also saying, can I get, <laughs> I don't mean to ask for too much. <laughs> I, I just, can I have 10 <laughs> foot from the sides, either side, either from the back. That way, I can leave here tonight and go back and look and say, okay, I'm I'm going to put it on the north one or the south one, or maybe I'll put it in the middle. But the variance is ten from either side, five from the back. We can do that. I don't see an issue with that. Okay. Either either way, it's going to be ninety percent hidden by the the front of the house. And maybe if I reassess it and take a look, maybe even completely. I'm just not. Sure about the uh, setback from the pool situation, but okay. Yeah, I, I I would prefer that rather than just the five foot rear setback because then you have to make application again. Right. And if you want to think about it, you can table it. You don't have to reapply. Okay, but if you want it, want us to consider a ten foot side setback, five foot rear, we can do that. Great. That's what you want to proceed with. Sure. Okay. Would somebody like to go through the uh, standards? Uh, request is not out of character with the neighborhood. Um, we have had other sheds come in uh, on corner lots, nevertheless, uh, and five foot is typical as long as we can push them behind the house as much as humanly possible. Uh, not be a detriment created to nearby properties by going with 10 feet. We've uh, alleviated that situation not achievable by any other method um, to some extent yes but with the addition of the pool that could become an issue uh, not substantial it's a third so it's not over half certainly no physical or environmental impacts um, difficulty is self-created uh, but it's not an undesirable change anybody have anything to add no, Okay, um, then I'll make a motion to allow a shed at 603 Pine Lakes Trail where a 10-foot side setback is allowed and where 15 feet is required and also a 5-foot rear setback to the westerly property line where 15 foot is required on a 0.24 acre parcel having SBL number 0 0.065, or 065.02-2.44 located in an R3 single family residential district under section 225.48 of the code of the town of Webster. <coughs> So, being a new home, you should have corner pins. I mean, I you're supposed to put corner pins. Yeah, I, I have. So them. just make sure you put the shed in the right place. Uh, you need a building permit, and uh, you need to begin meaningful construction within one year. All right. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Good session. Have good, uh, good luck with you. your project. Yeah. Okay. One eighty one Lake Road. <coughs> Sorry. 181 Lake Road, located at 181 Lake Road, applicant Ken Morrow is requesting area variances to allow the following. A, a lot size of 7,600 square feet where 18,000 square feet is required. B, a front setback of 33 feet where 75 feet is required. C, a side setback of 5 feet where 15 feet is required. D, a building height of 39 feet where 30 feet maximum is allowed, associated with the construction of a three-story single-family dwelling on a 0.19-acre parcel having SBL number 063.09-1-54, located in a WD Waterfront Development District 
under section 225.22 of the Code of the Town of Webster. Good evening. Could you identify yourself for the record and uh, tell us about the project, Al? Good evening. Al Maroon, McMahon Maroon says it. Uh, the owner, Ken Morrell, and his wife are here in the back. Um, we're asking for uh, variances that are needed um, to build a reasonable house on a small lot. And because the, uh, uh, the the house itself is in a floodplain, so we're impacted by by all those issues and wetlands and that sort of thing. So um, the lot is 7,600 square feet, where the 18,000 is required. Uh, the flood setback we're at 33 feet. I think we've cut the uh, the variance is to a minimum. 75 feet is required because it's on a county road. Uh, our map shows 25, but that was, <laughs> that was because they didn't realize it was on a county road for some reason. Uh, side setbacks, five feet. We were below that. We got five feet, two inches to make up for siding and that sort of thing, um, where 15 is required. And the building height. We've, we've talked a lot about building height and essentially the the, the ground floor is essentially the basement. And and that basement's going to be elevated a little bit above the floodplain. Uh, so uh, we've settled on 39 feet uh, as, a, as a building height. Uh, we've taken a look at a bunch of plans, I'm sure you have too, uh, that 39 feet from a basement floor to uh, the roof is, is not unheard. It's, it's pretty ordinary, actually. Do, do you have any architectural plans for the houses? No, we don't have architectural plans. They, they've been looking at it, um, but they want to wait until um, we get some variances to know what we're, what we're working with, because it's an unknown quantity at this point. Nothing happens on these lots without variances. The lots mm -hmm. are substandard. Very true. There's, uh, we, we've seen variances on several properties in this area. Um, the, the amount of variances is, has uh, been different on every one. Uh, we did get a couple letters from concerned neighbors that we could read into the record. Um, Many of the homes have a five-foot side setback. Usually, they'll they'll shift the house so they have access to the water with a vehicle. I mean, most of the ones we've looked at, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but usually they have five on one side, maybe seven on the other, just so they could get a vehicle or eight feet on the other side. To what we had attempted to do, um, because a lot of the homes along this stretch of the sandbar have been reconstructed, is um, back in 2013 when we started this row of, of new <coughs> construction, um, the board had aimed for an east side setback of five feet in most of the occasions. There is one that is at 10 feet. Um, and then a west side setback between nine and 12. And that's been fairly consistent along fairly the stretch. Good. And we've provided uh, a mutual uh, uh, easement between the structures of 10 feet for access uh, to water on the east side of the of uh, 181 and the west side of uh, uh, 185 so there's a uh, reciprocal easement agreement for access over that 10 foot strip it's actually 10.3 uh, or 10.4 physical between the between the structures so we have that, uh, that there for access. And they're small lots, so we're trying to mitigate, trying to <clears throat> get a, enough of a house. We had, um, as I said, we had a couple of comments from the neighbors. We'll, we'll read those in a minute. Now, typically, we, we, we saw 
we saw a similar uh, situation uh, down by the Glen Edith where they wanted the variances before the house plan. Um, a little more complex. A little more. A lot more complex. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I mean, well, how do you know you need the variances? But these lots here are so compact, maybe that's not really really comparable. Uh, I'm not concerned with the side setback or front setback being requested. Uh, I'd like to know why the need f f for the height, and I'd like to know what it would look like. You know, could be minimized <coughs> by a different roof style, the things of that nature. And, and that's exactly my concern. I, I mean, we were very consistent with the lots 213, 203, 195, 193, 189. Um, they were, for the most part, 40 foot wide lots, which is what you have to work with. Mm -hmm. And um, everyone came in asking for less side setbacks than the board actually allowed because we did try and make sure that there was, um, by, by doing the setbacks that we did, there's still at least a 15 foot separation between the dwellings. Um, everything being biased to the east. Um, and, and we've, for the one that did require or request a, a height variance, we also asked for a, a view of the roof line because a, a fairly steep pitched roof where the peak of it is at 39 is very different than a big flat roof where the whole thing is at 39 and I've got a, a, a wall basically for the residents on either side of these two properties. No, we, we understand that. I mean, I, I understand your lot is very narrow, but it's really no different than anyone else has had to contend with along that stretch of the sandbar, so. In order to get the square footage of the house you want, would it be possible to make the house narrower and come closer to the road? Because our front setbacks Without a planet stuff, we're just talking ideas, you know. Um, the front setbacks on the other buildings are, are less. Um, yeah, so I've got one at 30, and then they kind of stagger back, 26, 26, and then 15 and 14 are further up the road. I guess, now... As far as the height goes, let's let's get off the set, side setbacks for a minute. Um, if it's three stories and it's say nine, nine, and ten, say ten, say you want ten, nine foot ceilings on the first floor, <clears throat> so you got nine, nine, ten. That's uh, twenty-eight, well, the and one, then it the depends one, what pitch you put on the roof. The one difference is is all of the mechanicals have to be in the floor area. So we really probably going to be some micro lambs in there, and it's probably going to be thicker than a normal uh, floor. Mm -hmm. uh, so where the, where the uh, first, uh, the ground floor is going to be at a, at, a, at a set height, there's going to be that <clears throat> bigger differential between the next two because you're going to be running a lot of the mechanicals through there. Um, so I, I well, think that's, it's, a, that's an assumption, though. But, well, but they, that's what they <coughs> did at a couple of the other homes right, as well. But that's it's, an assumption. You know, well, I, I, you know, I'd like to see a architectural drawing uh, showing the height. Okay. Well, we can we can take that <clears throat> off the table, if you wish. Okay. Well, and come back with architectural plans. We're not. You know, it, it will just be easier for us. In other words, if you only need thirty-six feet. We'd rather give you a variance for 36 rather than 39, that's all. I mean, I understand your argument. That first floor just yeah. keeps every, is the big, it just keeps everything up out of the water. It's the garage, garage underneath the house probably, no doubt. Yeah. And then, well, then you have talked, a two-story house on top of that. We've talked out, out, uh, outside and 36 is, is I think, probably the minimum where we want to be. If that works, works, but you know, again, if it's if it's if it's going to be less than that, then we should just uh, um, take that off the table and and do it later. Would would it be possible just to do a schematic showing 
floor 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 roof and what you pay for the roof is to get us a total height? You know, not, not without spending a lot of money on plans. Just well, like, another, at another meeting, perhaps. But so it might be better for us at this point to to just not consider it, and then we'll make another yeah. application for the height. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that way we can get going on site planning and that sort of thing mm -hmm. with all the other area variances. Let's do this. Let, let's continue to discuss the area variances. And if it looks like there's anything that needs to be adjusted there, you could table and, and do everything at once. Because you're going to okay. get variances here. The question is sure. what, what, what exact variances. Okay. Um, I don't know. I, I understand what, you're, what Corinne is saying, but um, the ingress, egress easement kind of... Um, Kind of puts an end to my argument that they can't get to the water or get to the backyard. I mean, it's just a not, it's another way to do it. Um, and that's why we did it that way. Yeah. yeah there's if we look at the look on the map. There's houses right up against the lot lines. I mean, pre-existing houses. Well, not not that we. Not that we want to see that. No, I understand that, but we, we took a stand as a board when all of the other houses were reconstructed after the Christmas Eve event. And we maintained consistent setbacks, and, and everyone did not get the setbacks that they wanted because the applicant at 189, I believe, was requesting five feet on each side and did not get that. Um, the board instead compromised and asked the applicants to consider a narrower house so that they could have the five feet on the east side. And then on the west side, they varied. Um, I, I, I actually tabulated it out just so I could get a feel for the trend. Um, 189 is the house is at 14 feet, and this deck overhead entry area is at 9 feet. 193 is at 9 feet. 195 is at 5 feet. Um, but that when the house is, the east side setback is at 15 feet, so that's just swapped. Um, 203, it's at 12 and a half feet. 177 was given 10 feet, but they didn't build, so that's expired. So everyone along that stretch has been biased five feet on one side, and then, you know, nine, 10 feet to the house or, or, or to the side entrance way. Um, I, I think it, and those were for the people that were already there who lost their houses and had to reconstruct them. So I, I and it's, it's just my own personal opinion, we were consistent with them when they were already there, so I think we need to be consistent with anything further that comes along that stretch of the sandbar. Yeah, and to, to that point, I recall um, at 189, there was actually quite a discussion over the decks and steps right. on the west side of the house because they were moving into that and we also want some space for sunlight and things like that we're not trying to create you know a row house effect where that we, we want some space between these houses on on one side and, and so to Mrs. Vola's point that's why we've staggered them that way as we went through this process back you know five six years ago um, there, there was, you know, considerable pushback that people wanted wider houses, but the lots just don't support that. <clears throat> Five foot's just too tight on both sides. Uh, Josh, we have a, or Corinne, did you want to read the letters? I, I can. Okay. Um, the board received two letters. I don't think we received any further from neighbors. Dear Zoning Board members, regarding 181 Lake Road and 185 Lake Road projects on the agenda for September 8th of 2020, we are writing to ask the Board to consider the following changes to these proposed projects. 181 Lake Road, a maximum width of 24 feet instead of 29 feet being proposed. This would allow for an 8-foot side setback instead of 5-foot setbacks requested where 15 feet is required and a maximum height of 30 feet instead of the 39 feet being 
requested. 185 Lake Road also, a maximum height of 20, maximum width of 24 feet instead of the 29 feet being proposed. This would allow for an eight foot side setback instead of the five feet being proposed where 15 feet is required. A maximum height of 30 feet instead of a 30 of the 39 feet being requested. We are requesting these changes so that the new structures will be in conformity with the immediate neighborhood and will be more appropriate for the 40 foot wide lot sizes. The additional side setbacks will provide more distance between the houses for aesthetics and also fire safety. Respectfully submitted for your consideration, Robert Marjorie Gaskin, 189 Lake Road, Webster, New York, 14580. The next one, board members, the comment below was received on the town's website for your meeting tomorrow. Board meeting comment form, names George Mar Mar Margo Nowak. Address 100 Harvard Street, Rochester, New York. Mailing It's the mailing address um, for this family. Board meeting, you are commenting on the zoning board meeting, agenda number three, 181, and number four, 185, Lake Road. We are the owners of 177, 175, and 173 Lake Road, the three adjacent lots to the west of 181. We are pleased to see the proposed development since we have postponed doing anything with our lots due to the condition of the 181 and 185 Lake Road lots. Our biggest concern is water runoff from the combined effect of the two projects of the completed development due to the topography. The proposed dwellings in Blacktop are much larger than what exists on the other narrower lots. Positioning them with decreased side lot space creates an appearance of congested housing. Side lot requirements allow for privacy between families with less noise transmission. Less side lot area creates more water runoff on the neighboring properties. We all know that what too much water can do in this specific area on Lake Road from our experience in 2019 and 2017. Is it possible, I mean you haven't designed the structures yet. It's clear no, you're yeah. going to get variances to build these structures. Could you could you come up with a, a home that's 25.33 feet wide? Would that would that could you design a house within that? That'll give us a nine foot on one side. The when's, house, the, when's the next meeting? Uh, 14. September 22nd. September 22nd. What I'd like to do is I'd like to postpone this yeah. hearing and talk it over with my clients. Yeah, it, it, that makes sense to do that. We, for what I'm hearing from all the members of the board, um, and Corinne oh, was here, I was here, uh, Eric was here way back when those homes sadly, sure. terribly, they burned down and then they had to rebuild. And um, if, you, if you drive down, I, I drove through there a couple times to just make sure I was seeing the right things and, mm -hmm. and sure enough one of the yards on each house is larger which could be, but I guess I mean a, 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 a good designer may be able to come up with a great floor plan that's that width and then at the same time look at the height so we'll know exactly what height variance is required if any in, in other words we're not we, we'd like you to maybe go to the drawing board and see what you can come up with that would okay. address that one side, five on one side, and maybe nine on the other, and that makes the house 25.33 feet wide. Yeah, let me let me uh, get get with my clients and uh, and postpone this both hearings. Just you want a table? Yeah, table both hearings. Yeah. Until and then, the and then, then you could you can go to your designer. Maybe you might come up with a great plan that fits into that footprint, and then this this board is good to go. So yeah. Um, so um, the applicant has requested the table. I'll make a motion that we table till the September 22nd meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. And then, uh, yeah, you'll be on it. You'll be first up because you'll be at the table. Down. Great. Thank you very much. And um, obviously, the two applications are identical, almost identical. So uh, there's really you, you don't want to, you want to do the same thing at table for the next application as well. Yeah. I'm assuming. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, the applicants may uh, request a table for uh, 185 Lake Road as well, so I'll make a motion that we table to September 22nd. All Second. in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. You might hopefully come up with a fantastic plan and everybody's happy. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
933 Dibbles Trail Shed. Located at 933 Dibbles Trail, applicants Constance and Nick Kingsley are requesting an area variances to allow a five foot side setback and five foot rear setback for 15 feet as required associated with moving an existing utility shed on a 0.29 acre parcel having SPL number 094.06-2-22 located in an MHR medium high residential district under section 225-48 of the code of the town of Webster. Good evening. Hello. Could you uh, identify yourself for the record, please, and just tell us about your project? Uh, my name is Constance Kingsley. I'm Nick Kingsley. And uh, we're just trying to move our shed at 933 Dibbles Trail from where it currently is um, 15 feet in from the setback. We'd like to move it five feet from the southeast corner. Um, and I'd like just to add that um, moving it probably wouldn't impact the views of any of our neighbors. Uh, immediately to our east, uh, there's a hedgerow that's probably about 10 to 15 feet high. Uh, our neighbors immediately to the south are right the back of the shed. Uh, our neighbors to the southwest don't see the shed at all. There's two very tall spruce trees that block the view. Uh, and then our neighbors to the west, they see the shed, you know, uh, across our backyard, and it'll just move it 10 feet uh, from them. Uh, and yeah, um, it frees up a lot of space in our backyard. It's kind of a small parcel. You can see that it's not quite a third of an acre. Um, it would just give us more space in our backyard uh, that we can use. I, uh, I visited the site, as did probably other members here. And uh, interestingly, right beyond their backyard is like nothing. I mean, there's houses, but yeah. The way the lots are configured, they're quite a distance from, quite a distance from, um, you know, uh, where the shed is. Yeah. Now, I noticed the shed next door is closer to the line than it ought to be. I don't know if they ever got a permit or a variance for that. I don't, I don't remember it myself. I was going to ask about that. I remember the applicant coming before the board <coughs> for a variance for the pool, but I don't, I don't remember what was granted. I remember there was a fence and a maybe a pool cabana, which I guess a shed and a cabana are the same thing. Yeah, it depends I mean, on what you put in it. I but didn't measure it. But I don't know how, if we have access to even know what that was. And then 931? 931. It, yeah, it's my understanding that that pool went in probably 12 to 15 years ago. So um, I know it was a long time ago. You've been on the board that long? <laughs> Since I was a child. <laughs> okay. Yes. She's she's not a short. She's she's a, she's clearly the senior member here. <laughs> okay. Inexperience. Experience. Not even. <laughs> okay. Um, we just had a shed application tonight, just be, you know early in the meeting, where we had a problem with the five foot side setback because. Um, you know, you have a 15-foot side setback on the house. Um, here, the reason I brought up the, the fact that there's nothing, it's just like a huge yard behind you. The rear setback, person I have less of an issue with because there's nothing close to it. I mean, the nearest house is probably 100 to 150 feet away. So it's, it's quite a bit because they're really deep lots on the other side. But the side setback, I, I think, you know, may be somewhat of a problem. Uh, I, I see Don nodding, yes, like, <laughs> and, and Eric, too. Um, I, I don't know if you watched the previous, the, I think it was the first application, they were looking for a second application, looking for a shed variance. And because they had a 14-foot side setback, we wanted them to push that shed over a bit more than the 5 feet. We made it went to 10 feet. Um, the five foot rear setback we approved because they backed up the green space. Nobody would ever build there anyways. So, I mean, I could, I could kind of, you know, I, I, could, I could almost read the minds of, of, of the members here because of the way the discussion went earlier. Would you, would you be willing to go 10 off the side and five off the rear? And we'd be consistent with what we approved earlier tonight for somebody else. Well, I think that's a possibility, but the neighbors actually just came over this evening who are on the side where the hedges are on the east side. They wanted to make sure we weren't trying to 
have a um, workshop or anything, and they asked if it would affect the bushes, and we said no, because the bushes come in three feet, so we would still have two feet between the bushes and the shed, and we have a hedge trimmer, we could actually shave them down even more, just to make enough room for the lawnmower. So I don't understand why we couldn't go the five feet from the side of the hedges, because our neighbors don't see it, it's separated. <coughs> yeah, but the hedges are transient. Um, the variance goes with the land, so. Sure, and you see the marker in the hedges? There's actually a red marker. So we know where the property line begins, and the hedges go over that by three feet. So we could easily trim the hedges, is my understanding. The uh, part of the discussion uh, on the prior application was that with the 15-foot side setback, the shed is in full view of the street, whereas if you move it over, it's somewhat hidden behind the house. Now, okay. you, you did mention that you want to put a pool in, but by, by gaining that variance for the 5-foot rear setback, you're pushing it back enough sure. where it still leaves you plenty of room for the pool. Sure. So... And, and then you're only going to be, if those bushes are in three feet, and it's, you're only seven feet off the bushes, which really isn't a lot of space. No, it's not. But if you go behind it and you look and you just see how much more space we could utilize in our property, it's rather small mm -hmm. in the first place. But, I mean, absolutely, if that's what we have to do, I would totally agree. But I just want to utilize the most space that let's, we can. Let's, let's hear from the members of the board and, and uh, see which way it's leaning, and then we'll... We'll ask you, you know, once again. Uh, Dan, what, what, what's your opinion? I'd like to get the clear view as much as possible between the homes. Um, I, there again, we're dealing with practical difficulties. The applicant's not showing me one other than the need to have more of a yard. Worst comes to worst, so I could live with the five-foot rear setback, but definitely like to have that clear space between the homes. There's, there's no compelling reason right. to, to make that side setback variance by the no compelling reason. Right. Corinne? I <coughs> don't have any issue with the rear setback at all. Um, the, the distance between that shed and it, it's at the, the back corner of the nearest neighbor to the rear of you, so it they, they're really not going to notice it. Um, but, but we have been fairly consistent in trying to um, not be, you know, driving down the street and looking between houses and seeing the shed. You know, it's, it's tr just trying to keep the overall view. Um, and, and I think, I, I know we've done it, other air applicants within that area, we've, the rear setback has not been as big a concern. You know, and I know there's some wet areas behind some of the houses and such, but the side setbacks, we've been agreeable to 10. Um, but but the, the five feet, you know, it's, it's not like your leech lines are in the way or something where there's absolutely no way that it could be further in from the lot line than the five feet. Um, I, and I know they're, they're, they're small backyards, um, but... But the side setback, it, it's, we're just trying to preserve the character and be consistent across the other applicants. Well, 10 foot is a concern. And, and, and 10 feet 10 does feet give you some concern. more space, and pulling it back to 5, I think, would be helpful. That gives you an extra, you know, an extra 10 feet for the pool section. Yeah. Yep. Um, my initial is sort of where I'm at is it's been there, it was there when they bought the house. Mm -hmm. the, the argument that we just want more space doesn't meet any of the requirements of the, um, you know, the findings. So so we, we're sort of at a loss to cover the standards here. Um, we, could, we could make the argument of the large space to the rear but again, this isn't something where it's going to be forever wild or anything else. Uh, five foot by the code starts to impact the neighbor's enjoyment of their own property. Um, likewise, the five foot side setback, I haven't even 
bigger problem with uh, 10 foot by 10 foot, I could see, but I mean, it's been there. Why, why grant variances for something that's already existing and hasn't caused a problem for all these years? Now, when I visited the site, the applicant indicated they wanted to put in a built-in pool in the backyard similar to the neighbors, which would, because the lot's only 156 feet deep. Mm -hmm. So um, to, to address your point, um, the backyard is fairly shallow. So by the time they put in a pool, the pool has to be a minimum of 10 feet from the house, then the width of the pool, then the deck, and so on and so forth. So really the backyard, I think that would, you know, that would help justify the rear setback variance because when they put a pool in there, they're going to be up pretty pretty close to the, they'll be up against the shed as it is now. Okay, you're, you're right. It's 15 and 15 right now, so it's, le it's legal, uh, you know, uh, as it stands. So, okay, you heard all the comments. <laughs> um, you need three VS votes to pass the variance. Um, I think, I'm not sure Eric would vote yes for this, but I think five feet on the rear and ten on the side may pass. That's fair. Sure. Five and five isn't going to go. Sure. Uh, I, I, from what I'm hearing from the members of the board, it just it's not going to pass. So now you have a right to be heard before a full board. We have one member missing tonight. You could table it if you want and take the vote from a full board, or you could have us vote on this tonight. That would t t table, you'd come back on September 22nd. No paperwork on your part. But. Why not? Why don't we come back? I mean, if they say no to the five and five, that's fine. We well, try. Yeah, well, uh, if you go five and five, and the vote board the votes against it, then you, you can't come back for 5-5, five, five, you could reapply all over again for 5-10. Sure. and ten. My, years Can I make a suggestion? I, sure. And, and it's just a suggestion. I think 5-10 and ten would pass. I'm not positive, but I right. think it would. Someone's telling me to trust this man. <laughs> I think we'll take your advice then. Let's just do this. Okay, and, and, uh, and again, if it doesn't pass, then you have to reapply no. again for, sure. you know. Okay. Okay. Well, and, all right, I'm, I'm just going to ask, um, do you have, I guess, a layout of... Thank you. When, where, where you think the pool is going to be, and do you have a rough pencil sketch that... Yes, we met with um, contractors earlier this season, and um, we're scheduled to be the first build of the spring um, Blue Wave pool. Um, and he's supposed to come back this fall, and we're going to get everything laid out. He could still do it with the shed where it is, but it would be right on top of it. So he is how we found out about variances. He actually suggested that we get a variance to perhaps move the shed just to free up our space a little bit. How big a pool is it? Um, we're going with like a 16 by 32. It's kind of the smaller oh, standard. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. Oh, I'm 16 sorry. By 16 by 32. Don, you were about to say something? Well, I heard you were your friend was going. That would be helpful, I think. Uh, if they did table it and provide us that, and this way we could have a full board and deal with the issue that you're not building the pool till spring. No, not until the spring. So, would you like to table and have the you know you want to have the pool drawn on the map? Yeah, bring yeah, it yeah, back it's, because it's, it'd be helpful. Obviously, the shed doesn't have to be moved until it's time to build the pool, so there's not not a urgency. Uh, we were trying to move because as, as I indicated uh, in my statement that you know they were really didn't show a practical difficulty they just can't move it for the sake of moving it mm -hmm. I mean if they provide us evidence of something that's going to be constructed there yeah. with a master plan that would be helpful for at least our records of providing a reason why we're providing a variance what, can you get your contractor to draw the pool on the lot At least rough. Um, we haven't. It's been a little while since we've spoken to them, um, so 
Uh, I mean, they, they potentially could. I don't know what the time frame we'd be working with uh, to 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 provide you all with with a, an outline of where he thinks the pool might best be situated in the backyard. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not I'm not sure what the, the time frame working with, with you all would be on that. Um, it was very open with him. We were just supposed to get a hold of him again at the beginning of fall because he <laughs> said could. he could have, we could be the last build of the season or the first of next season, but they didn't know how quickly they were going to be building. They were very busy. And the loan we got was, it said you have to have the pool built this season. So our pool guy's like, I just don't know how Ron, we're going to be building, so we have to get a hold of him, and that could be next month. It and, could be yeah. six weeks. And I, I know, I know the way the contractors, when they're real busy, they don't spend a lot of time doing paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I know. I know. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, but if you couldn't, if, if, if hopefully he has you know, the staff or somebody. Yeah. It doesn't have to be fully blown out that it's going to be pavers in here, but you know, roughly, yeah. here's the edge of the house. 10 feet of setback between them, 10 feet for the sidewalk, the width of the pool, um, just, you know, rough, sure. rough it, dimensions to, to give us a feel. Um, it, 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 the zoning board, unfortunately, can't make decisions based on um, that you seem like a nice couple and we'd like to be able to help you out. We actually have to have, there's standards we have to follow and we have to have compelling reasons to, sure. to allow something different than what the code says sure so having the layout with the pool in the backyard and, and what else needs to be there and why the sheds in the way that gives us compelling evidence so it doesn't look like we're just being arbitrary in our decisions sure we're not trying to be no i understand our plan is the 16 by 32 pool and then you have to have legally the three foot of concrete around it and that's where we were going to start so it's the three feet of concrete with the 16 by 32 and then it has to be, I think, what, the, the concrete has to be 15 feet from the lot? Okay. So, yeah. If, yeah, if, if you could head up, have him add that to the survey map and get it to Josh well in advance of the next meeting, uh, the 22nd is two weeks away, obviously. Um, if you could do that, then we'll make sure that we get copies of it. So that, that, may, uh, that may help us... Uh, you know, with our decision-making process. Um, so, would you like to table to the 22nd? Sure. Table to the 22nd. Sure. There's no paperwork besides getting them the map so we could look at it. There's no more application, no fees. Okay. okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so I'll make a motion that we table this application to the 22nd on behalf of the applicant. So All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Thank Aye. you. Aye. You'll be one. You'll be the second one. Second <laughs> Thank one, you. Because we already had one table. Twenty second at seven. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Have a good Thank night. You. Have a good night. Thank you. Uh, that concludes this evening's uh, meetings. Uh, next meeting is September twenty second. Uh, have a good night. Thank you.